Friends, where were you on October 7th? On that dark day just over three and a half months ago. From a distance, we heard about it. We read about it. We watched it on our screens. The images of death and darkness on that October 7th, 2023. Last week, I traveled to Israel on a Nashville Community Leadership Solidarity Trip. We walked in and we felt it. Immediately when we entered, a chill went up my spine. This was a horror that was unimaginable to see in our homeland of Israel. In a kibbutz called Kfar Aza, a place that looked like paradise, with lush green gardens and orchards. A place that was supposed to be safe, a place that hundreds called home, was invaded by barbaric, ruthless terrorists. For in this once cozy beloved place, close to 80 men, women, and children were slaughtered, murdered, and massacred. And 17 people were kidnapped by the terrorists and taken to Gaza. There are no words to describe walking into the home of two young Israelis who lived the dream in their homeland. Their home that was now riddled with hundreds of bullet holes. A sofa with bloodstains on its cushions. A printout of its inhabitants' final WhatsApp messages on the wall. Their moments of terror now frozen in time. House after house riddled with bullets. Charred homes that were burnt by the terrorist. Each one of these housed another young person or couple who had either, either been murdered or kidnapped. Students. IDF soldiers and the next generation of our youth will no longer have to visit Auschwitz to see what never again looks like. They just have to enter this once vibrant community to see and know what our enemies did to us. The marked up walls from the rescue workers and Gaza and Zaka stand silent witness to how many were slaughtered maimed and mutilated, men, women, and children. The pain and agony is felt, and you wonder why. How could this happen in our homeland? This isn't Nazi Germany. This isn't Poland. This is Eretz Yisrael, our homeland, Israel. So friends, when feeling at a loss, or seeing that we are seeking for some answers to great questions. So we must look into the Torah reading for some guidance. Otherwise, we might feel at a loss. So I look into this week's Torah and I read the highly dramatic story of the splitting of the sea as the Jews left Egypt being chased by the Egyptians and in front of them is the sea. And there were two kinds of people who were standing there. There were those that were born leaders who don't wait for anybody to make things happen. And then there were those who were too afraid to take the first step. They were afraid to step out of their own shadow. I mean, in life, we know people who spend their life paving paths, who make things happen. And then there are people that are quite, quite comfortable standing on the side until others lead the way. And we see that the Torah describes that as the Jews were standing at the shore of the Red Sea and were panicking as the Egyptians were running after them, in front of them is the raging waters. It says in the Torah that Moses stretched his hand over the sea and a strong wind, east wind began to blow all night. And then it says in the text in Exodus, chapter 14, that the children of Israel, that means the people of Israel, came in the midst of the sea, and it was dry land. In the very next chapter after the story, the Jews sing a song of praise called the Az Yasher. And they have a great sense of gratitude for God for this outstanding miracle that they just experienced. The sea split. They were saved. There's a verse which they recount the moment that they entered the sea. And the words are the same as before, but in a different order. Here it actually, actually says, the children of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. I mean, which one is it? Did the Jews first enter a watery sea that became dry land? Or did God make the dry land for the Jews to walk on? And only then did the Jews enter what had previously been a sea. And friends, the answer really is both. Because God told Moses that the Jewish people 
should stop praying for a miracle. They should just go forth into the water. Go forth towards Mount Sinai. Don't worry. How do you go from the water? There's an ocean in here. What do you mean? Who goes into an ocean? So there was one man, his name was Nachshon ben Aminadav. He was the leader of the tribe of Judah. And he saw how everybody was hesitating. They weren't sure what to do. God said, go forth, but they were hesitating. So Nachshon saw the fear and the uncertainty around him, and he jumped into the sea. Following his lead, many other Jews entered the sea. Their feet got wet, and soon their bodies were wet, but they didn't stop. The sea was still raging, and only when the waters reached their chin did God perform this amazing miracle, and he split the sea. So these people who entered into the midst of the sea before it became dry land, these were people who were fully focused on fulfilling the command of God. Because they felt, we have somewhere important to go, and no obstacle is going to deter us from getting there. And if there's no obvious path, yes, there's raging waters, but there's no path how to travel, what do you do? You just go forth. You make a path. This is the destination that God wants us to go to. And Nachshon, the head of the tribe of Judah, saw the ocean. But more importantly, he saw the goal, the ultimate destination of Sinai. His focus on his mission gave him the inner strength, the courage needed to not be discouraged by the momentary obstacle of an ocean. And his bravery was actually the catalyst of many, many great miracles that were yet to come. But more importantly, it was a reminder to the Jewish people how to trust in God fully and completely. Yet there were others who didn't have the same courage and fortitude. True, they believed in God, and they were also saved when the sea split. But they didn't have that inner ability to forge a path where no path was clearly prepared in advance. These people who waited for the miracles to first happen and for the seabed to dry up before entering the dry sea. These people lived the life waiting for others to make things happen for them. They were ready to go where others would take them. Now the truth is, both kinds of Jews were saved. But some waited for miracles to happen to them. And some were the ones who made miracles to happen. And the question is, which group are you? Are you waiting and watching to see what other people are going to do? Or are you walking on your path, heading towards your goal, not afraid to forge ahead, even where a path is not yet made? My friends, when one asks, how could the calamity of October 7th happen in our homeland? The truth is, we have no answers. There is no answers. We'll never understand the way of God. But what we do know is that we have never been a stronger people as a nation of Israel than we are now. The people of Israel are united. They're strong. They're resilient. They are determined to win this war and turn darkness into light and move forward. Friends, there is no choice but to do so. We will fight for our survival and do so with pride and with courage. We are a united people, a unified people, and know that only together we will succeed. As the banners all around Israel, big letters say, Biyachad Nenatseyach, as a unified people, we will win. And there is no time to wait for the, wor for the world to lead us or guide us, as we are a nation of believers, the children of believers. And the task is now to go forward. Friends, tell you the truth. I came to Israel last week with great trepidation to visit the kibbutzim and Gaza border where over 1,200 of our brethren were murdered. My heart aches. My heart hurts. And I know there will be better days ahead. And I left Israel with a sense of great pride to be part of the Jewish people. During our visit, we met with many different people. And I met with an officer in the Israeli army who his job is to deal with the crisis of families who lose a loved, one, a loved one, who may have fallen in battle. He would have to knock on their door and tell them, your son, your child has fell in battle. And he says in the first two weeks of the war, he buried over, he did 70 funerals. And I asked him, tell me, tell me, how do you do this emotionally? 
I mean, doesn't this take a toll on you? He looked at me in the eyes and he said, the hug we received from our Jewish brothers and sisters, from the diaspora, from outside of Israel, who come to visit us is incredible and uplifting. To know that we are not alone, that you came here to share your love, your warmth, your emotional support makes all the difference to us and helps us move forward. We feel like we are one global family. We are all in this together, supporting one another with strength and with courage. He said to me, I am fighting for every Jew around the world. And your unity and support gives us the faith and the courage to know that we will win this war. And that Israel will forever be the eternal homeland of every Jewish person around the world. I was only in Israel for a few brief days. But yet... I came home feeling that we are now a stronger, unified people. And as we left Kfar Aza, our group visited the Chabad Center in the city of Sederot, which is a city that sits on the border of Gaza. And despite an act of war in their backyard only two, three miles away, and the city almost empty from its residence, its Chabad rabbi, the Shliach, Rabbi Pizen, met our Nashville group. And he shared that that place is serving as a hub for all who remain behind and to show that light will prevail over darkness and good over evil. Our group traveled back home to Nashville with resilience, with conviction to serve as ambassadors to the Nashville community and to share that Am Yisrael Chai to inspire us all to live as a prouder, stronger Jewish nation. So friends, I ask of you today to join me and become an ambassador for our people. Don't let the darkness of the world, the media, the anti-Semitism, the politically correctness of the world to stop you from being the proud Jew that you are meant to be. Do your part to create a sense of unity amongst our people. Let all differences be absolved and let us become one strong, united family, ensuring that I'm Yisrael Chai, that the people of Israel and the land of Israel will always be a beacon of light upon the nations of the world. So I encourage you to do your part. And I am sure that the Almighty God will do His part and will split the sea for each one of us, personally, in the micro and the macro of our lives and of this great universe. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom.